ok uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and uh, um, very good day to everybody uh, so today we are going to look at um, the risk uh, uh, available inside the risk uh, management process um, ok uh, so uh, based on ISO 31000 we can see that the risk is the effect of uncertainty of an objective so for this definition uncertainty include events which may or may not happen and uh, uncertainty is caused by a lack of information or ambiguity OSA uh, define risk as the product of the probability of a hazard resulting in an adverse event multiplied by the severity of the event and uh, probability or threat of a damage, injury, liability, loss or other negative occurrence that is caused by external or internal vulnerabilities and by economy of times eh? This implies future uncertainty about uh, deviation from expected earnings or expected outcome. So risk management, uh, the definition states that it is the culture, process and structures that are directed towards the effective management of the potential opportunity and also the adverse effects. The identification, the analysis, the assessment, control and avoidance, uh, minimization or elimination of unacceptable risk. An organization may use uh, risk assumption, risk avoidance, risk retention, uh, risk transfer or any other strategy in proper management of future events. So the types of uh, this is the type of techniques that is available to us uh, risk management. We are going to look at uh, in more detail afterwards. Okay. So how risk management is evolving? Uh, risk is an opportunity. You need to focus on its uh, competitive advantage. Risk is also uncertain. Eh? We need to focus on the optimization and the ability to respond or recover. Risk is an expense. Eh? You need to focus on managing the risk. And risk is known as bad. Eh? We need to focus on how you are going to return the risk, how we are going to transfer the risk, or even how we are going to mitigate the risk. So the objectives of the risk management, uh, we can look at the main point here on the macro aspect, uh, which is uh, caused by the environment, the technology, the human, the politics and organizational factor. On the other hand, it involves all means available for humans or in particular for a risk management entity. Uh, the management, the staff, the tools, and other organizational resources. Uh, so this aspect is more towards the uh, micro aspect uh, of risk management. Okay. So some of the principles of risk management uh, is for us to create value, uh, be an integral part of organizational process, be a part of uh, decision making, explicitly address uncertainty and assumptions, um, be systematic and also structured eh? whereby you as an organization you need to have this kind of qualities this kind of decision making this kind of creating value for the people to see that you are giving them the highest and best standards eh? like in our previous lectures and as uh, property managers also you are also uh, obligatory to ensure that uh, this kind of risk is not affecting the organization and most importantly not affecting the customer or even the residents of the property okay so this is some of the risk management process that we can see eh? first of all you need to establish the goals and context of the risk you need to identify the risk you need to analyze the risk eh? from the analysis of the risk then you can see that you have the finding of what is eventually going to happen with the risk and you need to estimate the risk level you need to evaluate the risk you need to treat the risk and uh, for improvement you need to monitor and review based on the communication that the stakeholders or the customer or the residents give back to you eh? uh, like if you use a case study of uh, uh, an elevator in the property eh? The goal is to maintain the, elevate, the elevator at the very good condition. The risk associated is like uh, overcrowding, 
uh, overloading of the elevator or even vandalizing the elevator you analyze the risk uh, what is the likelihood of people vandalizing the elevator and if people is vandalizing the elevator what will happen towards the elevator uh, whether the elevator's button is not going to be there whether the elevator's car can uh, be uh, broken eh? you estimate what is the level and you evaluate and lastly you treat eh? might be you mitigate uh, you put in a CCTV camera inside the elevator's car eh? so to reduce the likelihood of people uh, conducting vandalism uh, so you uh, mitigate and you treat eh? and then afterwards you review uh, whether one CCTV camera is enough or not or maybe you need to put in two or three CCTV cameras or even you put in uh, other deterrents eh? like you uh, you put the, the, the notice that states that or uh, if anybody is uh, being caught vandalizing the elevator they will be handed to the uh, authorities okay so some of the phases that we can see is through identify assessment control and monitoring uh, so it's uh, like a similar with the diagram that being provided here okay the identification phase uh, is for you to identify uh, how you identify you do the review on the documents you get the information you conduct a checklist uh, you do the analysis on the assumption you make the diagram you conduct a SWOT analysis strength weakness opportunity and threat and then uh, maybe if you cannot do all of that eh, you, you you get another uh, external expertise eh, external expertise that can help you um, make better decisions regarding the risk okay so there are a number of methods to identify risk including the brainstorming the review lesson uh, the interviews conducted with the expert and also the stakeholder eh? you find out what is their opinion eh? whether uh, they see something that you are not seeing before eh? even though you are the property manager you are not somebody who is always uh, the expert uh, in the elevator in the fire system in the electrical system uh, so you need to have these experts to come and tell you oh this is the type of risk available like this electricity system is already quite old uh, so it can produce a fire hazard uh, so i suggest you to change the the electricity electricity wiring system uh, so you as a property manager you must make the, the decision uh, uh, to mitigate the risk based on the uh, advice and consultation that you have received okay so types of risk available eh? we have a uh, systematic and also unsystematic risk for systematic risk is more towards the macro aspect as we, we said before eh? like inflation the recession the economic condition the government policy the bank's interest rate so sometimes this kind of systematic risk is we, we cannot do anything about it and we cannot do or change the government policy and that is uh, the prerogative of the government but what we can do is that we prepare our organization uh, we prepare an emergency fund uh, what is happening outside there at least we can be prepared we can have a contingency uh, of what is going on afterwards uh, but for unsystematic risk is more towards the specific nature of that firm eh? meaning this is uh, more towards the micro aspect of the risk eh? so this is something that you you as a property manager you can have the ability eh, to help to reduce eh? to reduce to mitigate or even to transfer the risk okay all right uh, so risk profile eh? the list of threats to which a company or organization are exposed so risk profile will outline the number of risks the type of risk and the potential effects of risk towards the organization so this profile outline allows an organization to anticipate additional cost or disruption to its business operation eh? so you as a property manager you need to uh, find out what is the profile of risk that we we can uh, obtain eh? like if you are facing the profile of pandemic COVID-19 now you gather 
all of the information that you have right? that you can get from the internet from who from the government and then you can implement the type of sops that is suitable right? based on the recommendation of the uh, of these organizations before right? so getting good information means that you have the ability to profile the risk the pandemic and then you can take the good uh, measures uh, that uh, we need to do in managing them okay assessment phase uh, uh, so this is some of the sub uh, risk that we uh, can see like uh, operative risk we have the risk for system risk people risk process risk uh, for strategic uh, we have strategic management and also business uh, for hazard risk uh, is more towards political, environmental, and litigation risk. Okay, so this is some of the forms that we can use uh, towards finding out what is the likelihood of a risk and then what is the consequences of a risk. Yeah? Like uh, now, pandemic COVID-19. Yeah? So of course. Uh, the likelihood of having COVID-19 among the resident is very high, almost certain. Yeah? So, uh, if combined with the consequence, it's going to be catastrophic. So it shows that uh, this can become uh, this can become uh, the highest effect and highest likelihood, uh, which result in the highest number of marks, 25 here. But if you see like uh, other kinds of pandemic, like a common cold, the flu, uh, a common cold uh, is going to be possible, uh, three, but the result might be just uh, minor. Uh, so the result will be like a mark here, six. Uh, so it's possible, but it's a minor consequence only. Eh? Other than that, if Ebola, eh, we know Ebola is happening in Africa. The likelihood of Ebola happening in Malaysia is quite rare, one only. And if Ebola happen, might be a uh, major action. So the marks will be four. Eh? It means it will be lower than the common cold uh, at six marks, and then Ebola is going to be four marks. But if you compare Ebola at 4 and common cold at 6 with the COVID-19, it's going to be much higher. Eh? And then the threat level is at red, which is critical eh? as compared towards uh, 6 and 4, which is only uh, uh, around low or even medium. Okay. So this is some of the techniques. It's very important for you to find out how you can eliminate the risk. Eh? So... Uh, eliminating the risk at all eh? we don't invest in a very high risk investment like you are investing in uh, uh, shares or even you invest in casinos eh? so that is very high risk even though the yield is very high also eh? but you have the, the chance that you will not get the money back eh? and then you can try to mitigate eh, the risk okay Sometimes this is uh, what we can relate towards the pandemic that is happening. We try to mitigate, even though we try to eliminate that, but it's going to be impossible. So we just try to mitigate. Transfer. Huh? It's not like we are trying to transfer COVID-19, no. But we try to transfer the consequences that will happen through the pandemic, huh? like uh, financial losses. At least if we have the insurance protection, then of course uh, for the loss of income we can try to reduce eh, or even get them back okay and lastly is the retention this is where you just you just uh, not like giving up you just uh, accept that this is the risk that uh, is always available and we are going to accept this risk eh? like if we see in the form before about common coal uh, common coal we cannot we cannot reduce we cannot eliminate mitigate we just receive uh, whatever happened to us uh, with the common coal we just eat the medicine and then whether we get better or not is something that we try to uh, accept okay okay this is some of the elaboration of the um, risk management techniques that i've given uh, the information about before Okay. 
this is some of the references that you can find out if you wanted to know more regarding uh, risk management inside property management okay so typical risk profile in the property management uh, we have a uh, like a bid process information transfer accounting process inside operations um, market risk uh, bank and surety support group capitalization in the financial uh, for hazard employee injury illness theft natural hazard property loss eh? property loss like the the, the 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 value of the property is decreasing eh? uh, people are not satisfied with the maintenance that you have done and then of course they they are not interested to purchase the property at your building so of course uh, the, the 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 market value will be stagnant or even decrease over time uh, so as a property manager is also the responsibility of you to help ascertain and also improve uh, the 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 present market value of the uh, of the building okay uh, and then we have a strategic risk uh, whereby the customer or industry changes uh, the growth strategy, the brand, the image, the competition. Uh, this is more towards your organization whereby you need to have a good will towards the name of the company, a good reputation. Uh, when people associate your company like uh, JM, uh, if people just say JM, oh, they know oh, JM property management is the best in Ipoh. So whenever if I have a property to be managed in Ipoh, I want to get JM. Uh, but if people associate your organization to be, oh, JM is not very good PM. Eh? Uh, the staff is uh, uh, overworked, underpaid, uh, the services given is not good. They hire unqualified people to become property managers. Uh, so we don't want that kind of thing or situation to be happening. Uh, so we want our organization or company's name to to be in the good or positive side eh? not the negative side okay all right uh, okay so this is some of the hazards that we talk about eh? even here already stated fire explosion natural hazard terrorism pandemic disease eh? in the inside the theory also they already have outline of risk what is going to happen outside there but unfortunately right now the theory has become the reality uh, we are really facing the risk and uh, it's really affecting us until now we have to conduct everything online uh, because of the risk the risk of contracting this kind of disease like you the students and I'm the lecturer we cannot meet physically yeah, of course, when we meet physically, there is a very high risk of contracting any kind of disease, any kind of pandemic. Yeah, so everything has to be done uh, like in this kind of format. Yeah, but nonetheless, it's okay. Uh, uh, class goes on, uh, the semester goes on. Uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, everything is also uh, going well. Uh, so from the theory also we already identify eh? uh, and who is uh, at risk eh? the people the property the supply chain the business the reputation the environment eh? impacts of course casualty eh? losses to human life the property damages the business interruption the financial loss the environmental contamination uh, loss of confidence uh, fine and penalty and also having lawsuits okay uh, benefits of having risk management is that of course eh, we need uh, we can maintain the reputation and also image branding uh, we can induce uh, better PM practice avoid losing of income eh? if we can work of course we can uh, still uh, we can still get our regular income if we cannot work of course Nobody wanted to pay any money if you don't work. Yeah? Um, protect the interest of investors, shareholders, stakeholders and occupants. Um, reduce building failure and workplace disruption. Um, save costs on recovering the losses. And always be prepared for any significant occurrence. Yeah? So in conclusion, having effective risk management uh, involves with 
you having the correct infrastructure, having the correct people to do the works, and having the correct frameworks to uh, conduct risk management. Eh? So you can protect your assets, you can protect your health and welfare, you can still continue the business after the risk has uh, passed through. Eh? And lastly is that you can recover. Eh? Uh, you can recover on the business aspect that uh, that you have left before. Uh, like before pandemic COVID-19 and after COVID-19. Pre and also post COVID. Uh, so you can still uh, go on and carry out day to day or normal working activities afterwards. Okay. So I think that's about it for our today's lecture. And uh, I wish you all uh, stay safe and also uh, I bid you wabillahi uh, taufiq wa hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.